good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining. So I am Ludwig Pascal, and I'm here to present the results of the study on the implications of lifting the open pit mining ban. Uh, we have 30 minutes for this 40 slide presentation. Uh, as a backgrounder, uh, the Mining Act, uh, the Public Act 7942, uh, was enacted in 1995. The open pit mining method was allowed by the Act. On April 27, 2017, uh, DNR Administrative Order Number 2017 does ban banning the open pit method of mining for copper, gold, silver, and complex ores in the country was issued, uh, citing environmental reasons. On December 23, uh, short of five years later, uh, the DNR issued a, an order uh, lifting the ban uh, and, and providing for additional enhanced parameters and criteria for surface mining methods, citing economic benefits. Ending 2021, uh, the mining industry, both metallic and non-metallic mining, had a production value of 224 billion pesos, exporting $46 billion worth of mineral, equivalent to 8.3% of total Philippine exports. The industry ex uh, employs 184,000, or 047 of total employment. Total government revenue from mining was 39.1 billion pesos in 2021. By, 20, uh, by, that, by the end of that year, uh, these, there are currently uh, 55 operating metallic mines, uh, 30 of which uh, are nickel laterite surface mines and five are open pit mine, mining uh, companies, operations. There has been numerous events in the past uh, resulting to environmental disasters uh, caused by open pit mining operations. Uh, many are abandoned and considered perpetual liabilities for government to address. Now, the former tailing storage facilities of these operations uh, may still hold toxic levels of chemicals and metals. The structural integrity of these structures poses great risk to nearby communities. Moreover, uh, this negatively impact on watersheds and water resources, and of course, its social impact. The objectives of this study are uh, determine the rationale behind varying insights on open pit or surface mining operations. Uh, evaluate social and environmental welfare costs in allowing open, mi open pit mining projects uh, affected by the ban uh, to proceed to operation stage and provide ways forward on simultaneously optimizing open pit mining benefits and ensure, ensuring ecological integrity. The DNR uh, order defines open pit mining as characterized by the extraction of metallic ores from a surface excavation, resembling roughly an inverted cone with benches along its walls, mainly for the extraction and disposition of copper, gold, silver, and complex ores. Open pit mining is a surface mining method. The methods applied by non-metallic mining, uh, cement plant feed, uh, nickel laterite mining uh, without blasting, uh, strip mining like uh, for coal are similar. In some projects, these are exactly the same. Open pit mining faces uh, common challenges as other surface mining methods with, with or without mineral processing activities. Uh, rehabilitation, surface runoff, worker community safety, air pollution, displacement, resettlement, and social exclusion. There are also common challenges faced as uh, underground mining with mineral processing. These are tailing storage, water resource contamination, worker community safety, displacement, resettlement, and also social exclusion. Now here are a few samples of open pit mines in the country. Uh, we have the Carmen Copper operations in Cebu, the Semidara coal mining operations in Antique, the Siana Gold Project in Agusan del Norte, and the FCF operations in Nueva Vizcaya. Aside from the inverted cone and deep pit excavations uh, common to copper, gold, or complex or open pit mines, uh, nickel laterite surface mines can also be technically considered as employing open pit mining methods. 
we have the Agata, Agata operations, Agusan del Norte, and uh, the Gore operations of New Caledonia uh, as examples, uh, showing the method is a global practice in mining laterite minerals. Uh, the narrative indicates we have sufficient mining laws that can assure maximum benefits and uh, minimal negative impacts to environmental and social welfare. But in many cases, we need more specific guidelines or policies to effectively implement those laws. Uh, cases in point are the need for additional standards in tailing storage facility design, metrics in measuring sediment pond efficiency, siltation and erosion measurements, biodiversity indices to measure rehab success, etc. Moreover, the capacity to effectively implement these laws in a transparent and sustainable manner possible needs continuous improvement. Uh, the list includes uh, the more popular laws affecting the mining industry. Uh, the list does not include the uh, LGU ordinances. Yeah, we break down the development and ecological integrity implications of open pit mining. Uh, these are uh, broken down into benefits and costs. Uh, we summarize here in the benefits. Most, if not all, are premised on economics. We have government share and revenue sources, sources from mining projects, social development commitments, programs, activities, and projects direct and indirect investments, contributions to the local economy, community organizing, and augmenting or optimizing the local and global supply value chain. Uh, here are sources of revenues uh, accruing to the government, uh, both national and local, together with benefits to local communities. Uh, most considerable uh, of the list uh, and immediately received by the government is the excess excise tax which is 4% of sales remitted prior or upon sales. Now here are examples of actual figures from existing and prospective mining projects, open pit mining projects. Uh, Oceana Gold in Nuevo Bicicaya, uh, Carmen Cover in Cebu, and FCF also in Nuevo Bicicaya are open pit mines. Uh, Eramen is a nickel laterite surface mining in uh, The base figures uh, used here were obtained from, from EITI. The Tampakan and King King projects are prospective projects. Uh, from these projects alone, government revenues can reach over 110 billion pesos in 10 years. Uh, but despite of uh, the revenue from open pit mining projects, uh, the product values is currently less than 0.3% of national GRDP. With the new prospective open pit mining projects uh, materializing, this may reach 1.5% of national GRDP in 10 years. We show here the trends for total GRDP relative to uh, gross value added in construction uh, GVA in mining and quarrying versus open pit mining product values. To your right, we zoom in and include total product values from large scale metallic mines and non metallic mines relative to GVA in construction and GVA in mining and quarrying. Total value of metallic mines is 12% of GVA in construction ending 2021. Uh, we zoom in further, uh, we correlate the gross value added for the mining and quarrying sector and construction sector with the product values of large scale metallic, non-metallic, open pit and nickel surface mining projects. The construction set, uh, sector was included uh, to show trends consisting, considering that non-metallic mining, which is part of quarrying, are inv invaluable raw material producers needed by the construction industry. We then magnify without the figures for the construction sector. Uh, this is the graph to your right. 
to better highlight that the metallic mines continue to grow during the harsh COVID pandemic economic downturn. Note the growth in laterite surface mining. It is the green line to your right. Uh, this graph uh, uses the same data sets, uh, but on a longer time frame. Mining quarrying sector graph to your left and open pit mining product values to your right. As we shall show later, the, the drop in volume for 2020 is mostly due to the stoppage of the Oceana Gold DDPU mining operations and only partially to the COVID pandemic restrictions. The open pit the anti-open pit mining stance of both the late Secretary Lopez and Nueva Vizcaya LGU contributed considerably to the dispute between the LGU and the Oceana Gold uh, mining operations uh, operating in Nueva Vizcaya. These were protests uh, and barricades, uh, which resulted to the drop in production of Oceana Gold starting in 2017. Uh, this was also the time when Oceana Gold was applying for the new all of its FTAA. In total, there was a loss production valued about approximately 17 billion pesos per year due to the ensuing implementation of LGU policy. Uh, there, there was also non implementation of national policy during that time. Here we show performance by product. Uh, we process gold and copper mineral sales surging since 2016. Note that the copper volume drop is due mostly to the drop of Oceana gold production. Despite low contribution to the total GRDP, the mining and quarrying sector continues to grow uh, with a GVA figure at pre-pandemic levels of 169 billion pesos in 2019. In 2021, it contributed a total of 3.5 billion pesos in the form of taxes and fees to local governments. Here are comparative financial expectations from prospective big ticket mining projects uh, versus economic indicators as gross value added in mining and quarrying and gross regional domestic product in the respective regions of the projects. The Tampakan project's product values alone, consisting of copper concentrates and gold values, at 202 billion per year, uh, pesos, 202 billion pesos per year, will be around five times more than the combined product values of all open pit mining, mining projects operating in 2021. And also just over the product values of all metallic mines combined on a yearly basis. It can increase the GRDP of the uh, Soxcargen region, uh, region 12, by around 40% once it operates at full capacity. The King King project, uh, on the other hand, uh, in the Bau de Oro, also is expected to be able to produce more than 2021 product values of the open pit mines at 46.5 billion pesos a year at full capacity. While the Silangan Copper Gold project, previously proposed uh, to be a, an open pit mining project, but now pushing through as an underground mine, shall be producing 18 billion pesos per year worth of copper and gold values and can increase the GRDP of Surigao del Norte by 5%. All three projects shall operate uh, their own captive value at mineral processing facilities. Uh, this slide uh, show that while GVA of the mining and quarrying sector is less than 1% of GRDP, in certain mining regions, uh, the contribution is much more considerable. 
13% in Region 13, uh, Caraga, 8.4% in Region 4, 4B, Mimaropa, and 3.1% in the Cordillera region. This slide shows some contributions to local, uh, to host local governments as environment and natural resources collections and utilization, ENR. Now collections uh, as property taxes and business taxes totaling 8 billion pesos from 2018 to 2021. Utilization of ENR is primarily in general public services and economic services. Still on benefits, uh, the 10 year estimated social development commitments will reach 1.1 billion pesos in 10 years from these three existing open pit mining operations. Royalties to indigenous peoples to, to reach 290 million pesos in 10 years from Oceana Gold operations alone. The cities and municipalities competitiveness index is a measure of the competitiveness of a province, municipality, or city. There is a scoring system and involves scoring against five pillars, namely economic dynamism, government efficiency, infrastructure, efficiency, and innovation. Generally, uh, there is a correlation between improvements in scores with mining activity in the area. Another benefit is that products of open pit or surface metallic mines allow the country to augment the local and global supply chain for much needed industrial minerals and critical minerals needed for energy, energy storage materials. Now we present uh, ecological integrity concerns, uh, which constitute social and environmental welfare costs. These are risks that may be inevitable and must be addressed to mitigate potential negative impacts. By experience, uh, it is possible to mitigate, mitigate such, such risks. The first step is to be aware of this risk. Here are examples of past open pit mining projects uh, with value add mineral processing activities that showcases disasters resulting to enormous social and envir environmental welfare costs. This is the former Dyson Copper Silver Mines in San, Mar San Marcelino, Zambales. Uh, its tailings dam uh, collapsed in 2012. Uh, it affected the Mapanuepe Lake and eventually into the Santo Tomas River. Around 250 families were evacuated as low lying villages were flooded with mine waste. This is the Mark Copper Mining Corporation's uh, Marinduque, uh, private Marinduque operations. Uh, there was a Telix Dam bridge in March 1996, uh, an estimated 3 million tons of tailings discharged into the Mogpog and Boa rivers. The 1993 spill uh, pumped an approximate total of 200 million tons of toxic material into the Boa river for 16 years. Uh, 
it was found out that Mark Copper Mining uh, did not undertake a comprehensive uh, EIA, environmental impact assessment, for using uh, a previously mined pit as a waste storage, uh, which uh, led to the collapse. Now, DNR at that time still issued an ECC to allow operations to continue. Uh, it directly affected uh, 15 to 20,000 residents. Now, more on that Mark Copper mining disaster. Uh, in 1998, the present value of current and future foregone income in coastal and river fishing, crop farming, and farm trading were estimated in two scenarios. Uh, scenario A with a short term with short term rehabilitation, uh, the cost was around 179 million pesos. Uh, scenario B with long term rehabilitation, uh, it dropped to 162 million. It was only last year, in May 16, 2022, uh, that the regional trial court issued a ruling on the 1993 Mark Copper Mine spill case. Uh, it granted only 200,000 in temperate damages and 100,000 in moral damages to each of the 30 plaintiffs. An, addition, an additional 1 million pesos for exemplary damages was also awarded. Uh, these were deemed uh, severely undercompensating the plaintiffs uh, when compared to the valuation study. Here are common violations. Uh, this is not a list of single operations, uh, but the companies are given chances to pay the penalties and implement remedies. Rarely does the DNR or the uh, multipartite monitoring team uh, recommend closure or suspension due to the above. Now, attribution, lack of specific standards and metrics, lack of specific measurements and bureaucracy are major challenges for government auditors. The next two slides uh, present the inequitable distribution of benefits between host, adjacent, and affected LGUs. These three color-coded maps, uh, the third one is on the next slide, uh, present the amounts of LGU collections, SDMP fund commitments, and gross value added in mining and quarrying by region. And circled are regions with active mining operations and high uh, gross value add in mining and quarrying as percent of total DRDP. The value levels are amounts that can be expected in mining regions, except in region 4B, Mimaropa, uh, which has a low LGU collection. The region GAV in MAQ as percent of GRDP is 10.6 percent and it has the highest GBA in MAQ value among the 17 regions in 2018 at 32 billion pesos. Yet the LGU collection is less than 33 million pesos. This is the third map showing the SDMP contributions in 2021. We present recommended pathways based on findings of the study. Uh, the text boxes are arranged to form a cause and effect diagram uh, with the right side being the outcomes. Red as unacceptable and blue as acceptable activities and outcomes. The non-acceptable outcomes of past mining projects which operated prior to the enactment of the Philippine Mining Act, such as the environmental disasters of open pit mines, the liabilities left by abandoned legacy mines is not because of the mining method used. Uh, such disasters like spills, 
breaches, uh, acid mine drainage, uh, surface runoff or erosion, groundwater contamination, health and safety issues can occur regardless of mining method used and commodities mined, especially if mineral processing is part of the mining project. Now, uh, assuring compliance to laws and effective monitoring of performance requires focused and, com and competent monitoring teams armed with equally effective tools, standards, venues for collaboration, etc. From evaluation of mining permit applications to eventual monitoring of performance, different levels of expertise, tools, systems, and methodologies are needed. Uh, depending on mining methods and processing technologies used. So, with hundreds of projects that need evaluation and later on monitored, uh, audited, and reviewed, uh, capacity building and improvement activities must be continuous and be in existence parallel to the mandates of government agencies. Speaking about uh, developing effective tools as part of pathways moving forward, uh, we feature a full-scale benchmarking, which can highlight models of environmental risk mitigation projects. One such project uh, worthy of being a benchmark is the Panyan Pit Rehabilitation Efforts of the Semerara Mining and Power Corporation. The Panyan Pit was closed in September 2016 following the depletion of its mineable coal reserves. Uh, but in less than two years, uh, SMPC completed what should have been a five to 10 year rehabilitation plan for the South Panyan Pit. From an elevation of 260 meters below sea level, uh, the mined out area is now five to 11 meters above sea level, with rolling terrain and over 350,000 seedlings of endemic and native trees. The rehabilitation won at the 2021 ASEAN Energy Award Special Submission category. Full-scale benchmarking is not just about identifying models, but involves articulating how an activity or a project becomes worthy of emulating. How did they do it? Another capacity and capability that needs to be developed or harnessed to the fullest is the use of appropriate technology. A comparison of the, the way we monitor land use in 2020 as against in, 20, uh, uh, in 2003 as technology advances uh, highlights such advantages in making use of appropriate technology. New uses of spatial technologies in the field of baseline data acquisition uh, like measuring surface water characteristics, flows, air characteristics, etc., to be used for planning purposes, uh, then to monitoring rehabilitation performance, surface erosion, land use, mineralization tendencies, stockpile measurements, measurements, land cover changes, and the likes are just a few examples. Uh, these are based on computations of Ms. Arvi Manihar, based on uh, SCAP's land cover matrix. Now, here are recommended ways forward, uh, divided into two major group, groups of needs. Uh, Need group number one, we need to establish sustainability indicators and monitoring and evaluation platforms. Uh, this includes ecological indi integrity indicators uh, for watershed management, forest cover, water resource, water bodies, biodiversity audits, mineral wealth, etc. cetera. Uh, we need indicators for, for public and safety uh, to include disaster risk, heavy metal toxicity, worker safety, women and child laborers. Uh, we need to prevent government uh, from shouldering post-mining rehabilitation costs. As with abandoned mines, uh, there should be corresponding bonds and stiff, stiffer penalties. There should be post-mining rehabilitation performance metrics. There should be post-mining community level indicators. 
We propose baseline and endline monitoring for in course and post mining impact assessments to include periodic monitoring and reporting uh, public disclosure of mining firm operations. We need digital monitoring and evaluation platforms. Uh, there should be augmented government oversight on non metallics. We need the institution of perpetual rehabilitation and maintenance funds for closed and foreclosed mines. We need to assure continuity and applicability of environmental laws, uh, even in declared autonomous region. Second group of needs, uh, we need to optimize benefits from open mines uh, while addressing ecological integrity concerns. Uh, this requires strengthening transparency, transparency platforms, including monitoring and evaluation standards and metrics, uh, instituting prog programmatic, programmatic uh, review of adjacent or clustered mining projects, uh, strengthening institutional capacity to validate projects EIS. Uh, we need hydrogeologists, uh, TSF engineers, socioeconomics, etc. as part of the evaluating and, and validating teams. Augmenting mining fiscal regime for appropriate benefit sharing. Uh, improving cost accountability arrangement to include expense coverage for proposed assessment or validation monitoring and evaluation and post-mining rehabilitation. We need to shorten adjudication process and increase penalties and community compensation for damages. Uh, we need reinvestment and programming of mining revenues uh, towards human capital and ecological integrity of, uh, of PAPs. We need to adopt more accurate policy defin definition of open pit mining large or small scale mining, covering both metallic and non-metallic mineral extraction. Last but not the least, uh, we need to continue or assure national oversight on, go on government revenue matters in difficult to access provinces or regions. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening.